Hey there, welcome back to the Houdini for MoGraph tutorial series. Today we're going to be creating this electricity effect using Houdini's for each nodes. If you have any coding experience, you're probably familiar with the concept behind a for each loop, but for the rest of us, it's a way to perform a specific task while iterating a certain number of times over a set of info. In our case, that info is just going to be geo. That may sound a little complex, but just follow along and you'll see how it works. We'll start by using a draw curve node. And then if you hit enter in the viewport, this allows you to draw a shape that you like. So I'm just going to do this little S kind of shape. And if you look at the points, it gets a little clunky. So I'm just going to use a resample node to create evenly spaced points. Start with something with a high value in the length to get just a base shape. And then drop a second resample node to give us more points and set this to treat polygons as to subdivision curves just to smooth it out a bit. All right, like in our lines tutorial, we're just going to create a UV attribute using UV texture, set it to rows and columns and points to measure along the line. All right, time for the for each loop. If you type for each, you'll see a few options. These are all the same node setup. It's just a few different presets depending on what you're going to do. And for our purposes now, select the one called for each number. It makes this orange network. And now whatever you wire in between these two connected nodes is the function that's going to happen in your for each loop. So this third node here stores some data that we're going to use later. So we're just going to rename it to info. And if you select one of the other presets, it won't actually have this info node, but you can get it by clicking on the start of the loop and then selecting create metadata import node. And on this last node, you'll see we have this iteration slider. This is where you can set how many times to perform the loop. So let's create a point vop and make an anti-aliased noise, set it to 3D, and add it to the position. Then wire that out. Middle mouse click the frequency, offset, amplitude, and roughness to promote the parameters outside. And I'm just going to mess around with these values to make something that we like. And we've got our little base now. All right, and we want it to flow from left to right. So type $f times 0.1 to make it move. All right, we can see that it's happening, but it's actually just performing this 10 times, repeating the same exact thing. So to fix this, we're going to actually use that info node now. Click it, and if you go over here, you can see that we have something called detail attributes. These are like global attributes rather than just point or primitive specific ones. So this iteration one here refers to the pass that the loop is on. So that's how we're going to get some variety. So go back to our point bop. And in the offset Y, we're going to use an expression to access the iteration. So detail, open parentheses, quotes, dot, dot, slash, info, quotes, comma, and quotes, iteration to access that value, quotes, comma, and zero, and parentheses. Now, if you hit play, you're going to see that we have 10 different lines with some variation. This is pretty cool, but it seems a little even. So we're going to use that same expression in the amplitude to give us different jolts. We want it a little random, so we're going to use the random function as well as a fit range, since the random function just returns us values from 0 to 1, and we want to adjust what that range is. So we're going to type fit, open parentheses, rand, open parentheses, detail open parentheses, and then access our iteration with this expression and close those parentheses as well as the random ones and hit a comma. We're going to fit it between 0.7 and 1 and we're going to have that fit a span a range of 1 to 5. And that's looking good. What this does is essentially it's clamping it down at that 0.7 this way, most of them get a value of 1, and only a few of them get this 5. So that way, we only have a few of the ones that are sticking out real far. And this is looking good, so let's just dive in and use our UV attribute with a spline ramp to taper in the ends. All right, 
Now, since we already have this loop set up, you could do this next step inside there, but I just want to show you a different way you could use for each loops. The first one let you create 10 iterations just from one input, but let's just say you have these lines created elsewhere, someone in the studio handed them to you, and you want to adjust them individually. So to do this, you're going to use a for each connected piece preset. And this creates a connectivity node to make a class attribute which the preset adds here in the piece attribute as the value. And if you click single pass, you can actually see each individual line. So we're given these lines from somewhere else and we wanna move where the lightning is originating from. On a single pass, you can see that the zero point is here at the end, but when we have all the lines, they all have different numbers since it's iterating one at a time and giving it the point value from that. So we're gonna create a group, name it start, and with the type set to points, and in this base group here, type is zero to add the first point in each line to our group. Now, if you drop a soft transform after the for each, add our start group as the objects to adjust, and just move it around, we can see that we're actually adjusting the starting position of all of our bolts. And we can just increase the soft radius a little bit, smooth out our transition from beginning to end, and there we go. So that's two different ways that you can use the for each loop. There's many more, and I'm sure we'll dive into it in future tutorials. It's a super powerful tool that can let you do some awesome procedural work. In another tutorial, I'm definitely going to show you how to use these to populate your scene with randomized rocks. But see if you can try to figure that out on your own before that comes out. And as always, our project files are on our site, and just keep exploring. <laughs>